Now that we've gone over the classic oscillators for this chapter, let's look at an interesting property of springs and see what it means for them to be arranged in parallel or in series. Now we're actually going to start with springs in series because it's a little easier to visualize and to, to recognize when two springs are in series. But the main idea overall, whether series or parallel, is to say that now we could have one mass and multiple springs, and there's a way to take that arrangement and to simplify it down to the same mass with one single equivalent spring. And that's helpful because we know everything about the mass spring oscillator as long as there's just one mass and one spring. And so if we can take a more complicated arrangement and turn it into that, well, then we can study it because the property is that the complicated arrangement or the equivalent arrangement will have the same mechanical behavior. And so springs are in series when they're one after the other. So for instance here, between the anchor point, which is the wall, and the mass M, there's two springs here, K1 followed by K2. And that arrangement is equivalent to one single spring with a constant k equivalent attached to the same mass. And the idea is that we're going to get formulas to find k equivalent from k1 and k2. Now when two springs are in series, we find k equivalent by writing 1 over k equivalent is 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 and if there were more springs, plus 1 over k3 and so forth, you can generalize. And if you did the math and you arranged these fractions to have a common denominator, you would then see that k equivalent upon flipping the fraction that you would get, you would find k1, k2 divided by k1 plus k2. So either form is fine. Of course, if you have three or four springs, you might as well just start with the left-hand side and combine all of those together before you find k equivalent. Um, it's probably going to be faster, but if you just have two springs, you can either use this form or directly the result. Just don't confuse the two. But what that gives you is k equivalent. And so now it tells you what stiffness the spring has to have if you take only one spring with a constant k equivalent so that it has the same behavior as these two springs on the left. And so the goal is to simplify your arrangement to the same mass with just one spring. So springs in series is one way that you can arrange the springs. The other way is springs in parallel. Now springs in parallel are a little different than springs in series because between the anchor point and the mass, there are now two different options. You could go from the mass to the anchor point through K1 or through K2. And usually, when the springs are arranged in that fashion, they look like they're in parallel, like actually geometrically parallel to each other, hence the name. And so that's helpful and makes it easy to recognize when that's the case. However, just to be sure, if I took K1 and I moved it to the other side, these two springs would actually still be in parallel, assuming that, of course, that you know this spring is anchored here to a wall or something. And the reason is that to have them in series, they have to be one after the other, as in attached to each other. But here, they actually have the same behavior on either side of the mass as they do if they're both on the left side of the mass, as long as they're attached in this fashion. And that's because here, if you pull the mass to the right, then both springs pull back. And then if instead you had K1 on the other side, then when you pull the mass to the right, you would get K2 would pull back and K1 would push back, but that would be the same net effect as having K1 on the left-hand side in the first place. And so just a note, because we're really used to seeing them be geometrically parallel, but that's not really what being in parallel means. Uh, it means that they, they both have the same effect on the mass. And if you look at your options between the mass and the anchor point, you have two options here. Now, it turns out that even though it's a little bit harder to recognize springs in parallel sometimes, it's a lot easier to get k equivalent because k equivalent is simply the sum k1 plus k2. And if you had multiple springs, if you had you know, three or four, 
you would just add all the spring constants together to get k equivalent, under the condition, of course, that all the springs actually be in parallel. And so, again, the idea is to simplify an arrangement of springs down to a single spring with the same mass that would give you an oscillator that, first of all, is much easier to study, but second of all, has the same mechanical behavior as this arrangement here on the left. And so there's a bunch of problems that use these properties. Sometimes you're even asked to prove them, um, and we'll look at problems like that when we do practice problems. But to give you an example right here, this is a common arrangement that you would find, or something of the like. Right? So you're given you have four springs, one single mass, and none of the classic oscillators that we've studied look like this. Right? We've only done one mass, one spring. And so when you see this, one of the first things you should think of is, how do I combine all these springs together based on the series and parallel rules so that I can get this down to the same mass with one single equivalent spring? And so that's what we're going to do here. Now, you have to start, you don't necessarily start on the left or the right or anything. You start with the arrangement of springs that is obviously in series or obviously in parallel. Now here, it is obvious, hopefully, anyway, that K2 and K3 are in parallel with each other. Forget K1 and K4. If you think of K2 and K3, there's two springs in parallel because if you look at your options, there's two ways to get to the wall from the mass, right? either through K2 or through K3. And so the equivalent spring constant, we're going to call that uh, K23. And K23 is going to be just K2 plus K3. And if all the spring constants are 1,000 newton meter, that's going to give us 2,000 newton meter. And so K23 is the equivalent spring constant, but just for this arrangement of two springs. So what you would then do is you would replicate this drawing. And instead of drawing two springs for K2 and K3, and get rid of one of them, then you'd, oops, there we go. And then you would call this one K23. So the arrangement above is identical from a point of view of the mechanical behavior to this arrangement here. So now you repeat the analysis. You say, well, I know what K23 is. K23, just for later reference, is 2,000 Newton per meter. And now I look at my three springs, and I have to figure out what the next combination is. And so I look at the next obvious combination. Now K1 and K23 are obviously in series. There's no doubt there, right? This is exactly what we drew above. They're one after the other. And so we are going to have an equivalent spring constant, call it K123, that we're going to find by writing 1 over K1 plus 1 over K23 is equal to 1 over K123. That's the same as having K123 is equal to... Um, K1, K23, divided by K1 plus K23. And so what's K1? Well, K1's 1,000. This is 2,000. Divided by 1,000 plus 2,000. And so that's going to be... Um, 666.67 newton per meter. And that's your equivalent spring constant. So we can then take this arrangement and simplify it one step further by replacing these two springs in series by a single equivalent spring. So let's do this. 
right now we're down to this. And this is, um, let me change colors, K123. All right, now there's just two springs left, so we have to figure out if they're in series or in parallel. Now, they're definitely not in series because they're not one after the other. They're not attached together in sequence. And we said earlier that if you would take K4 and you would place it on this side, it would be in parallel in fact, with K123. So even though it doesn't really look like it, certainly it doesn't look like it the way it did here, the springs K123 and K4 are actually in parallel. And so because of it, I can conclude that K equivalent is just the sum K123 plus K4, because that's how I add spring constants if the springs are arranged in parallel. And so that gives me um, 666.67 plus 1,000, which is, of course, 1,666.67 Newton per meter. And so that's the end of that. We've reduced our arrangement of one mass and four springs to a single mass with an equivalent spring that has a spring constant, K equivalent, that is equal to 1,666.67 Newton per meter. And so this single oscillator, if you were to build it, would have the same mechanical behavior as this oscillator if you were to build it. Now, of course, one spring and one mass is much simpler. So there's a good justification as to why you would want to take an arrangement like this and make it simpler. It's just that you can't just, you know, guess your way through it and be like, hey, let's just pick any other spring and pretend that it's the same. There are rules to combine these springs to get the proper equivalent spring constant. So this is more of a side note than... Um, all the other stuff in the chapter, right? It's, it's not one particular oscillator that we can talk about, but it's a common property of springs, and therefore it's a common type of problem on, you know, multiple choice questions or just exams in general. So um, it's very easy once you've practiced it a bit and once you know how to recognize springs in parallel or springs in series. But if you don't know that these rules exist, uh, it might be very off-putting to see four springs in one single mass and be asked to solve this thing you know, and find the period of oscillation, let's say. So anyway, good little, um, good little couple of formulas there to simplify these problems. And I would recommend just practice it a bit, make sure you can recognize springs in parallel, tell them apart from springs in series. And I would also recommend doing it step by step. Just always take, you know, maybe two or three springs that are in parallel, combine them, and then see what you have left, and then two or three springs in series, if, if that's the case, and then combine them and see what's left. And go step by step rather than try to do everything in one fell swoop because the math isn't, isn't always obvious. Like in one case, you just add the spring constants. The other one, you're doing one over K and adding those together. And it's kind of hard to get it right off the top of your head without breaking it down step by step. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogverse Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogverse Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogverseacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.